Hi, are you part of some ethnic group? It seems like it because of your clothing. Yes, I am. My name is Tausub. You can call me Sulu or Suluk. I think the reason why I look familiar with my clothing is because we are one of the largest of the Muslim ethnic groups. Near the Western Philippines, we live primarily in the Sulu archipelago. Ah yes, I've heard of your group already because we are the third largest ethnic community in Sulu archipelago after Bajau. Oh by the way, my name is Yakan. I also live in the Sulu archipelago. Really? You're Yakan? I almost noticed that because of your dress that is traditionally made from textiles. By the way, that is a wonderful and unique dress. Yours too. I love your matching sarong of the Malay type. Oh thanks, I hope I can visit the place and study some of your vernacular houses. It's really interesting for me as an architecture student. Really? You're also an architecture student? Me too. I want to hear from your what's your traditional house looks like. Well, we call our traditional house in the southern Philippines as Baisinug. It comprises two or more houses on stilts that are connected by an open space serving as a house extension. Wow! Ours is called Luma. It is our traditional house in the mountainous interior of Basilan Island. It is an elevated rectangular one-room structure with few small windows and protected by a high-pitched thatch roof. Speaking of roofs, what's your roof look like? For the roof parts, we use two types of roofs. We have Sungan, which is a hip roof with triangular vents, and Libut, which is a pyramidal roof with vents at the apex. Other roof parts that we have are lubing lubing or the after or the rafter which is the rectangular lumber providing support on the ridge beam and its upper end and the purlins throughout its length. Next we have kasau on the purlins are the bamboos or wood branches that are placed above the rafter. This is to hold the roof and then we have batang Batang bubungan or the ridge beam which is the thicker lumber at the ridge of the roof and kept in place by king posts to provide support for the roof's purlins. Last is the pusal or the king post. This is the vertical member often similar to the bal baluster with belly base placed above the roof beams. Next is obung or the tie beam. Is the re this is the rectangular lumber that runs across the upper portion of the roof to, the to connect the central columns and provide support for the king post. Lastly is the hanglad or the room beam. This is the perimeter beams above the upper end portion of the posts used to support the roof structure and perimeter wall. And the tajuk pusong or barge board decoration which is located at the upper end of the barge board that covers the projecting end of the gable. The decoration is usually in the form of sea serpent or what we call naga or a bird that we call manok manok. That's really cool! We also have kasaw in our roof of our traditional house. Our kasaw or purlin is made of pieces of wood or whole bamboo laid horizontally and securely tied above the rafters to support the thatch roof. Wow, it seems like we have something in common. What will be your other roof parts then? Besides kasaw, we also have salilihan or rafter or long pieces of wooden lumber set at an angle as primary framework support for the thatch roofing. Next, we have the kulung or hip rafter which is the one supporting the ends of the roof's sloping sides that provides additional support for the traversing salilihan or rafter. Lastly, we have bubong or roof ridge which is layered with thatched roof materials securely tied at the top purlins to cover the space between the ridge. Wow, so that's kind of, that is kind of unique for Mars. How about the walls and other parts of the house? It's kind of a lot actually, but let's begin with our sampayan or roof beam, which is a long wooden piece of lumber horizontally laid and firmly attached to the topmost portion of the post to support the roof and its tie beam. And then we have ding ding, or the wall enclosure from hand, hand sewn, hand sewn wooden planks laid horizontally above every panel and built at a distance from the main post with separate wall posts as support. 
Tan Diwan or the window, which presented as the small opening built about 1.10 meters above the interior floor and selectively placed along the perimeter wall. And then, Pag Nuith or the floor joist, which is the parallel horizontal wood members placed above the girders that hold together the main posts. We also have Haren, or the ladder, which is the movable bamboo that serves as the way to enter the house. Ulum, or the post, which is the vertical piece of log or timber that is buried in the ground to hold both the upper floor structure and the roof. Next, Babag, or girder, which is the horizontal wood member tightly secured to the post as support for the floor joists. Gawang, or the door, which serves as the entrance and access to the interior space. And then, salat or tie beam, which are the wood members that are the horizontal tied above the roof beams to keep the wooden posts and roof beams in place. Lastly, we have pamutok or wall post that is intended primarily to reinforce the perimeter wall. Wow, that's really a lot. I think ours are way less than that. Really? I thought yours was more than mine. Let me hear yours. I'm really interested. Sure. Let me start from our lower structure. First, we have the tiadad or the wall that is made out of split bamboo, which is the covering laid vertically at the exterior part of the wall. And then we have liug or the central post. That is the column placed at the center of the house to hold the crossing floor beams. We also have the common space areas. We have what we call pantan or the open space that is elevated open extension as a hall living space and place where fruits, vegetables, and fishing implements are kept. Fishing? Is that your cost of living? Yep! Today, we are landless and make our living from fishing or petty trade. Fishing as either a full or a part-time occupation is carried out in coastal waters, mainly using nets, hook lines, or traps. Still sounds fun and unique. Sorry, continue. That's fine. There's still a little left. Other common spaces that we have are dagtong or the bamboo water containers which is a whole bamboo with a removable opening at one end to hold refilled water, usually laid near the kitchen and bathing area. For the last three, we have lawang or the door in the main house functioning as an access to adjoining spaces. It is often provided with a removable and enclosing panel and then we have panggong or the receiving area where it is space intended to receive and entertain some guests. Lastly, we have our gibayan or the main house that is the only structure in a tausog or a bay sinug house that is provided with nine posts and used both as living and sleeping areas. Wow! I can't really believe that the anatomy of your traditional house is a little less, but I learned a lot really. I think those information would help me in some way of my architectural class. Me too. I think we are both unique in a different way. By the way, I am heading out already. See you, Sulu. Thank you. The architecture in the Philippines represents the richness of culture, tradition, and history. Most vernacular houses are influenced during the time of colonization. To preserve these heritages, architects studies the essence of vernacular houses. This promotes abundant resources that can be found in the Philippines, such as bamboo, wood, etc. Also, the structures of the houses are based on the kind of environment that Filipinos live in, and how these vernacular houses were made by different ethnic groups with their story and history behind. Philippines is rich in land forms and bodies of water, which becomes a livelihood for Filipinos. That is why the features of vernacular houses in the Philippines are studied by architects and designers so it won't forget the culture, tradition, beliefs, and histories that we had before.